I'm Joanne Banco. I've got a quick tip for you today for dressing up napkins with a really simple technique. You could dress up napkins that you purchased or napkins that you've made from scratch. I think you're gonna really like this. It's a great way to uh, add a little spice to your table for holidays, for change of seasons. Um, give your home decor just an extra little added touch of, of class. So we've got a bonus project for you as well. If you take a look at the um, embroidered napkin as well, that's all that is, just a plain napkin with some embroidery added and some bias trim to that. So these two projects tie together really nice. Let's move over to the machine. I'll show you how easy it is to apply this trim. I'm starting with a bias binder foot. Now this foot would of course normally be used for sewing bias binding and that's in fact exactly what I'm using. I'm using pre-purchased, very narrow bias binding. Um, you could use your own bias binding that you make. You could probably even use some different trims. But this is available in a lot of different colors. I chose this pretty green for a spring look. So I can adjust this foot. It's got a screw to adjust the foot closer or further away from where it's actually stitching. And it's got another screw that opens and closes what I'm using as a guide for that bias. Makes it really easy to sew really straight, makes it really simple to go straight from end to end. So I'm going to snap the foot on just like I would any other normal foot. I've got it already um, set so that it's the perfect width for my bias binding. Okay, make sure that's fully snapped on. If you notice, I'm going to leave a little tail. On my samples, you saw I had a little tail at the beginning and at the end. That's because it makes it really easy to finish it. All I have to do is tie those in a little knot and I'm good to go. Bias doesn't ravel. I can clip those points. They'll look really pretty. And if I wanted to stitch them further, I certainly could maybe even add some little tassel trim. The sky's the limit with this. It's a really quick technique. So I'm going to start by selecting a stitch that I have on the machine. Uh, you can see it here. It is commonly called the serpentine stitch. And I chose this one because it's made up of straight stitches that are going to snake across. So here we go. Let's get started. Look how easy that is. I just simply line that up right along the edge and I can go from end to end. Of course, I could mark this if I wanted to, but get pretty good at eyeballing once you've done this a few times. And it just keeps it all in place. That bias binding is going right through that channel, so I have nothing to worry about as far as keeping that on the straight path. I can use a contrast thread. Again, I chose this green because I just thought it was really, really pretty for kind of a spring look. When I get to the end, I'm going to leave a little bit of space. I'm going to anchor that stitch, slip this out of the machine. So to finish this off, I'm just going to take my scissors, snip that thread. I would, of course, sew all four edges, snip this end at an angle. And then when I've got all four of those done, I simply tie the ends together in a nice tight knot. You could sew another little piece of trim if you want. And you've got a nice, pretty finish. Very, very simple, very, very quick. Add whatever colors you want, and you've got a really beautiful napkin project.